Welcome to my series of guides for combat achievements. We'll be looking at how to do the sub-120 grotesque guardians task. We'll be covering both a max gear and a budget gear setup, as the time is generous enough to make a budget setup viable. As per rating, this boss is a 5 out of 10 on the RNG scale. Not too bad as the time is pretty generous, though it is possible to go unlucky on hits. You're likely to get the time pretty quick. Skill wise, I put the boss at around 6 out of 10. Not too hard mechanically, but a bit to memorize, and a bit of reacting to XP drops to decide when to do certain things. With a budget setup, the RNG will be higher, but definitely still reasonable, so don't be afraid to go for it if you only have budget gear. Now, for the max gear setup. As you can see, max melee with scythe, max range of blowpipe, I bring my ballista as a heavy hitter to last hit Dawn's first phase, but it's optional. If you fire too early, it can be a big time loss, so up to you. Claws and DDS for specking, Rock Hammer because the Throne Hammer is slower, we'll be on Lunars for Venging, and Spellbook Swapping for Thralls and Death Charge, so we need quite a lot of runes. We have a Slayer Ring and House Teleports for Quick Bank, and we bring one Granite Dust just so we have room to pick up the Granite Dust for boss drops. Now, for a budget setup, the main difference here is no Scythe and a Chally instead of Claws, which will switch up our method a little bit. Pegs, Prims, and Tassets don't make much of a difference, but I was too lazy to grab cheap alternative gear. You can downgrade some of these fancy items and still have similar DPS. The key items here are a good melee weapon, DDS, Chally, and Blowpipe. Though depending on how restricted your gear is, resetting for Ruby Bolt specs at the start may be a good idea. But this gear is strong enough on its own, and does not need Ruby specs. Dragon or Rune Darge should be good enough. Adding may be a bit rough, but good RNG can fix that. For Ballista, you can choose any heavy hitting range weapon. When I actually got the budget kill, I actually banked the Ballista to show it's doable without messing around with blast hitting, so once again it's optional to bring, but the more budget for setup, the more helpful it'll be. Now for the method. We start by prevenging and spellbook swapping into Arceus, summon the Thrall, and then spellbook swap into Arceus again to be ready for later. Now we can ring the bell, be sure to stay in front of a bell and ring it with a standing start. From what I've heard, this saves one tick on a fight timer compared to running towards the bell to ring it. Now, we'll pop Dawn with melee prayer and rigor activated. Dawn may fire a spell that stops you from attacking, but it rarely ever lands where you're standing, so I usually just ignore it and tally if I get hit, as I need to focus on Dawn's HP bar, but if you notice it, feel free to dodge. Once Dawn is below 300 HP, you can cast Death Charge. Once Dawn goes below 250 HP, it's going to get ready to leave. If you think your blow up XP drop is enough to bring it below 250, you can go for a last hit ballista hit. Once it starts to leave, switch into your melee gear and get ready to sipe Dusk and cast Venge whenever you find a chance. You should click on Dusk right as Dawn disappears from the screen. Important to attack at the right time here. Then switch into DDS and step under the boss but tick before your attack is ready, and then DDS as your attack is ready, taking Avenge and not losing any ticks. Next, Scythe a boss and back away to avoid Dusk's attack. Hopefully you finish the phase, if not, just keep siphing while avoiding the obstacles. Now switch back to range gear and get ready to fight Dawn. You can optionally resummon a Thrall while dodging the obstacles. Just be careful not to spellbook swap stall and get comboed out by obstacles. Once you think you got an XP drop that will bring Dawn below 12 HP, wait one tick after your XP drop, and then click to use the hammer on Dawn. The Runelight HP bar can be off by a bit, so just be aware of that. If you click and Dawn's not low enough to die, you will lose a tick to go back to blowpiping. So make sure you, you are pretty sure that Dawn will go low enough. Once Dawn is dead, switch back into melee gear with claws and cast Venge. After you go flying, escape the fire prison and stand right by dusk, claw as soon as you can, then the tick before you're ready to attack, step under and then claw again, taking a Venge and attacking without losing any ticks. Now just scythe until dusk dies. When it's close, just click to use the hammer every time you get an XP drop for your scythe. Unlike with a blowpipe, you don't need to delay a tick, and there's nothing to lose if you guess wrong. Just hammer every time. If something ever goes wrong, or DPS is bad, just telly and try again. Now for the budget method. I'm going to cover this briefly while only going into detail on the things that are different. So watch the max gear method first. The first difference is that since our main weapon is a 4 tick budget weapon, instead of doing 1 scythe and walk under for venge, we will do 2 whip hits, 1 DDS hit, and then right after that DDS we run 2 tiles away and then run under, and then click to DDS the boss, though our DDS will need a tick before it actually attacks, after the step under. 
But step away before we step under to laze with yellow special attack. So we can get off our revenge off without worries. Very important you get the timing of all this correct. Then we just chally from a distance to avoid the yellow special hitting us. And hope to proc the next phase. If the damage is bad, you can do an extra whip hit before chally. But be careful not to get hit by the yellow special. Now it continues like normal until the dusk returns. We will whip instead of claw spec, but the timing is the same. Keep whipping until a chally has good chance to kill, and then send the chally. A timer can be helpful to judge when your last opportunity for sub 20 is, so you know when to send the chally. You can even use the report button plugin to show your 6 hour log timer, and if you start the fight at 1.20.30, for example, you know you got a chally around less than a minute 20 later for sub 20 so a couple seconds before 1.21.50, just a bit of quick math you'll have to do, or just start a timer to make it even easier. Now. We will just watch over an example kill of each while I commentate. Okay, so here's a max gear method. We start by being prevenge, spellbook swapping, swimming the thrall, and when we spellbook swap again, we're standing still to ring the bell. So now, Dawn does spawn, start blowpiping, got our melee pair on, just doing our thing, watching my HP bar closely. Once it's below 300, we want to cast Death Charge, and then be watching for when it's about to go below 250. So if we think about will send it below 250, we'll do a ballista. We really got it quick there, so I didn't even have time to go for a ballista there. Now one scythe, wait till we're about ready to attack, then step under DDS. Good to go. And then after that last scythe hit, step away so you don't get hit by the yellow. And then hit it again. And oh look, I'm just keep scything until he gets past the phase. Now just dodge, switch into our range gear, we're chilling. Summon the thrall here if you want. Be careful you don't get stalled. And now once again we're attacking Dawn. Um, once it gets very low, you gotta be ready to rock hammer. Once it's around below 12, you can kill it. Um, so try to look at your XP drops if you get a big one. And you have to click a tick after you get the XP drop. So once you see a big XP drop, wait a tick, and then do it. So now, back into our melee gear, prevenge, escape the fire prison, get ready to claw. Claw once, and then right before you're ready to attack, step under, claw again. Already almost dead, do a scythe hit. Probably needs like one more. At this point, just every hit should be doing a hammer. Raise get big speed drop, so it takes sooner than timing for a blow up to my hammer. And we're good, sub 120. Easy as that. So, as long as your hits are fairly good, you should get it. If you have bad hits, you won't get it. It's just how it goes. But yeah, now let's move on to the budget kill. So, we prevenge, pre frawl, spell book back to our chaos, do a standing start. I actually like the Angler above 99 HP a lot. It does mean you have to bank a bit more often, but it's nice to make sure you don't have HP. So now if you don't have Claws, you actually don't need to Death Charge below 300. So depending on your spec weapon, you may or may not need to worry about Death Charge. But it, does, I mean, it doesn't hurt to do it. And once again, once it's below 250, you can go for a Ballista or something. Now we do two Whip Hits, followed by a DDS hit, and then immediately step away and step under. We've got Step Away, Step Under right away, and then click to attack with a second DS spec. And then back away and do a chally. And that was a really good DPS there for budget gear. But yeah. If it looks like it's not low enough, you could go for you know, an extra whip or something. But DPS was great there. I just go straight for a chally. Really quick phase. So now we're back to this in our range gear. Doing some damage. Getting ready to rock hammer. A second we see a, a good XP drop once it's almost dead. And just delay a tick after you get the XP drop. So that you can be tick perfect here. And now. Back to melee gear and venge. And we don't have claws, so we just do whip hits instead of claws, but same timing. We hit, and right before we're ready to attack, step under, and hit, and easy venge. And now we're just waiting till we get a chance to chally. I see it's on about 80 HP. I go for one more whip hit, a noodle. I'm just gonna send it at this point, and we get it. Easy. I actually had enough time to do one more whip hit, but it was a tough call. If I was using a timer, I would have been able to be more precise. I was just going off a of feeling there. But yeah, Chally can hit very big. Depending on your gear, it can max over 140. But yeah, it does depend on the gear. But yeah, that is a budget method. And you know, once again, change your setup based on what you have. You know, upgrade to Armadillo if you have it, upgrade to Claws or Scythe if you have it. But this is just, um,. A fairly budget gear with a mishmash of gear you might expect an Iron Man to have, but they might be missing key items like Scythe or all the God Wars items, you know? But yeah, that is it. 
I hope this guide can be helpful to you in getting your sub 120 Grandmaster task for Grotesque Guardians. And good luck on those combat achievements. And you can do this, I believe.